there are a bunch of playmakers from the AFC North that will reward fantasy football managers with plenty of points and plenty of production. But let's find out who our favorites are by talking with SI fantasy analysts, Michael Fabiano and Ben Heisler. And Fabs, I'm going to come to you first because I want you to give us your stud and your sleeper from this division. Well, we'll start off with the stud and Nick Chubb. He was great last year, better than I thought he was going to be considering he was sharing the workload with Kareem Hunt, but ultimately he was really the guy. I mean, you look at the numbers, he was the RB11, but he missed time due to injury. He was ninth in fantasy points per game among running backs, and he scored 12 touchdowns in 12 games. That's pretty good. Uh, the Browns are going to run the football. We know that. They ranked fourth in rushing percentage last year at 48.4. They were third in rushing yards per game at 148.4. Uh, Chubb averaged 17.2 touches per game, even with Hunt in the mix. And the Browns are going to continue to run the football. And Nick Chubb will be the guy on early downs and near the goal line. So uh, I think he's worth a first round pick. And then my sleeper isn't a sleeper because there aren't really that many sleepers in this division. I'm going to go breakout, and it's going to be J.K. Dobbins in Baltimore. He averaged six yards per carry as a rookie. That's very impressive, right? Uh, he had 18 catches on 24 targets. I think those numbers will rise without Mark Anger. Maybe not significantly, but I could see him catching somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 passes. And then from week seven to week 17 last year, Dobbins was the RB15. He averaged 13 touches a game. Uh, during that time, Mark Ingram had just 22 combined touches. So if you factor in that Ingram's no longer in the mix, Gus Edwards will get his, but Dobbins is a more versatile back, a more well-rounded back. And also keep in mind, the Ravens ran the football a league high 55.9% of the time. I think J.K. Dobbins could be a top 12 running back in 2021. I, I love the breakout potential for Dobbins, and I love the pick of Chubb being the sleeper. I think he could be the RB1 in fantasy points by year's end, non-PPR formats, because we know McCaffrey and some of the Saquon, Kamara, PPR, they get the advantage. Chubb, not as many passes as, as those guys. But let's shift gears now uh, from running backs. Let's go over to Ben Heisler because I think you have a couple of receivers to talk about when it comes to rookies and busts from the AFC North. Yeah, I do indeed, Bill. I'll throw in a running back, too, as far as, as rookies goes, but only because I feel like the opportunity presents itself so well. But I'll start with the receiver. Jamar Chase in Cincinnati is going to flat out ball out over the course of this season. You know, most analysts will talk about rookie wide receivers trying to develop chemistry with their quarterbacks. The great part for Jamar Chase is that it's already there. He doesn't even have to do it because of their time spent together at LSU. Joe Burrow basically saying in year two in the league, hey, get me my number one wide receiver. Don't worry about you know protecting me. We'll, we'll figure that out in the second round or so. You know, Chase's generational wide receiver upside. According to Sean Childs over in his projections, uh, he has Jamar Chase at over 80 catches, over 1,200 yards, and multiple touchdowns. As far as multiple goes, we're talking about 10-plus over the course of the season. So uh, it sets up well for him to walk in and be the wide receiver one this year. And then also for rookies, and Najee Harris with the Pittsburgh Steelers is in a really terrific spot. You know, James Conner led the Steelers in scrimmage yards and touchdowns over the last three seasons, and he also still missed 12 games. Uh, they like to have feature backs. You know, guys like Benny Snell and Anthony McFarland all barely averaged over three and a half yards per carry. Uh, Najee Harris comes in, is going to make um, an immediate impact right away for Pittsburgh. And then if we're talking about a bust, uh, let's go back to the Cincinnati Bengals and a guy that I've had you know, my eye on for the last few years is a guy that I really liked in PPR leagues. But uh, it's hard to get excited about Tyler Boyd this year, guys. Saw a substantial dip in targets a season ago with a better offense. Also saw his receiving yards go down by about 250. He finishes a mid-tier wide receiver three in PPR, and that's where the bulk of Tyler Boyd's points come from because of how often he's targeted. Now bringing in somebody like Jamar Chase, who, who, who could command anywhere from 100 to 120 plus targets in year one, that's going to take a substantial dip into Tyler Boyd and the once reliable PPR wide receiver, probably no longer the case. I view him more as a wide receiver five at this point, considering all the amount of targets likely going into, likely going to Jamar Chase. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that Tyler Boyd. I'm actually a little upset about it because I th always figured he was one of those underrated guys that you can get late in your fantasy drafts and he'd still put up really good numbers. But this year, with T. Higgins there, and then you mentioned Jamar Chase. I do think his his stats are going to have to come down a little bit. Uh, plenty more analysis on the AFC North on Sports Illustrated. Our colleague Sean Childs wrote up about every playmaker from, from this division. You can check that article out 
by going to si.com slash fantasy.